Thank you so much for joining us today for our midweek gathering. I am so pumped about today's message and worship. But before we go into that, I just want to share a couple of incredible things that are happening here at Somos. Every single Thursday, we have our Connect groups. Shout out to my Connect group. I love you, ladies. Um, it is such an incredible time where we get to uh, just come together and touch base with one another. It's only 40 minutes. Um, of course, my group, we always go a little bit longer, but usually groups are 40 minutes. It'll be the best 40 minutes you can spend on a Thursday night. If you are not connected yet, send us a DM at Somos EPTX on Facebook or Instagram and make sure that this week is the week that you connect. And also, we had an incredible Mother's Day. Um, it was so awesome to see everything that our uh, incredible team just pulled together throughout the week from giving meals to um, loving on the nurses at UMC to uh, taking hygiene kits to four different women's shelter, uh, shelters in our city. One of our incredible uh, friends, Johnny, was telling us that as he was dropping off the bags that uh, the ladies there were just talking about the hygiene items and how they were gonna do it to um, get some for that week. And so we were able to go in and meet that need. And that is what we are about. You know, one of our core values, one of our pillars as a church is that we are generous. Come on, say with me, generous. And today I just wanna thank you for being generous. Thank you for being faithful in your giving. Even through this time, we could not do what we're doing as a church if it wasn't for your generosity. You know, Malachi 3.10 talks about testing God in this area. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house test me in this says the lord almighty and see if i will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be no room enough to store it that is our prayer for you that is our prayer for our church that as we are generous that God will continue to bless us to the point that we have no capacity to store all his blessings. So today, I want to invite you to partner with us to give. You can do that at somoschurch.cc and um, on our cash app. Well, now we're going to jump into a time of worship. I encourage you to open up your hearts and receive what God wants for you today. Hello, Somos. We are so excited that you tuned in. Please sing along with us. We miss you guys, and let's worship together. Your favor waits within my dreams are small compared to yours why would i worry about tomorrow when i know that all i gotta do is trust you lord come on someone You won't. 
everything will be all right. Come on, Somos, why don't we just start worshiping God, the God that is for us and that works everything for our good. Welcome, Somos. We are so excited that you're joining us for our midweek gathering today. If you are new here, we want to invite you to text this number right here with your name, number, and email just to keep you up to date for all the incredible things that are happening in our church. 
if you're new here, you should really know one thing, okay? Our church is kind of new too. So you are in the perfect time of jumping in and doing this thing called life all together. You know, we started, uh, we started this church a couple of months ago, some months ago. And one of the key things uh, that, that God really gave us, you know, is that we're building a legacy through this church. We believe in our lives that what God wants to do in us and through us in your life as a church, it's to build a legacy, you know, and that's 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 been the theme, you know, for, for the past months, you know, as a church. And, and right now, uh, you know, we are going to start, which I'm super excited to announce, that we are going to start a brand new series, a brand new collection of talks. It's more than just topics and series that we're going to be talking about. I really feel in my heart and in my spirit that God is calling us to shift in a new way. And, 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 and what we're going to be talking about for the next couple of weeks, it's don't stop building. Come on, tell your neighbor right now, don't stop building. Come on, say it one more time. Don't stop building. You know, I, I, I'm really excited about this because I know that every single one of you watching today, every single one, we have a great purpose. We have great potential. I know that what God wants to do in your marriage, in your business, as a student, in your family, in every single area of your life, what God wants to do, it is so big and so awesome. And, and I know that as we're building our lives, sometimes we can get tired and we can get burdened. And we have that temptation of quitting or stopping. So this is going to be a great reminder for all of us to not stop building. Don't stop building. You know, something that I think it's it's worth mentioning to every single one here watching, uh, it, it's a little bit about me, okay? You need to know that I am not a handy person. I'm not a handyman. I really suck at doing stuff with my hands around the house. I am not a, t I, I know how to cook though. Okay, so that's with my hands, you know, but I'm not great at fixing things or building things, you know, and, and, and that part of me, it's been kind of hilarious in our marriage, you know, me and my beautiful wife, we've been married for uh, seven years this year. And, and one of the th hilarious things is just that constant thing that I, I'm so bad at building things, okay, from building like toys for Sophia, building furniture. I am horrible. And I have to say though, instructions, they help, but some of them are more confusing than actual help that you get. You know, one of the, of the my favorite stories, you know, in our marriage is that, so Beatrice and I, we got married, we moved to DC and we moved into our apartment together, you know, and, and, you know, we went furniture, furniture shopping. So we're there at Ikea, which their instructions are bad. Okay. But we're there at Ikea. We buy a bed. We drive uh, to our apartment and, you know, as a great man that I'm trying to be, and you know, yeah, I got this, honey. I start putting this thing together. And it's a mess, okay? I am like sweating. I'm frustrated. I'm looking at the instructions backwards and forward. Like, IKEA instructions, they are like hell, okay? They don't have like handwritten stuff. It's like little pictures, okay? So I'm there trying to figure this thing out. And, and man, I'm getting tired, exhausted, frustrating, and I'm putting things. And, 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 and I kid you not, I'm there for hours, right? And I finally start getting a hang of it. I start building the bed. And once I got to the last, like the last piece of the bed, you know, the, 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 one of the last things, I realized I had put everything backwards. So there are, I am just frustrated. I am like upset. And I'm like, dear Lord, I, I mean, you have no option. We don't have a bed, right? So I need to finish this thing. So I put everything, take every, I, I literally had to take everything apart, okay? It was completely wrong. So then I go again. 
and start putting everything again together. It was a little bit easier, right? Because I already kind of had an idea, you know, so, but still sweating, frustrated, confused. And I finally finish after like three or four hours. I have a point, so stick with me, okay? After three, four hours, I finish putting this beautiful bed together. So there we go. I'm feeling proud of myself. I am a man. I could do this thing. I did it. You know, I grabbed the mattress and I put it on top of the bed. And the mattress fell, had a couple of inches extra. I had purchased and built a full size bed when it was actually a queen size mattress that we had. And I was there about to cry. And I was like, you know what? Like, forget it. We'll just like switch the mattress. I'm not building this thing again. But guess what? You can't stop. You cannot stop. Once you start something as important as your bed, you cannot stop. So I had to put all all the bed, had to take all the bed apart, put it inside the box, put it inside our car, drive 40 minutes to that Ikea so that we can actually get the correct size. Finally, I get the correct size. Guess what, church family? I had to start building again. Again, I had to grab the box, open it up, put the pieces together one by one by one. And after another three to four hours, I cannot remember, I finished putting that bed together. Building, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's complicated, but once you have a vision, once you have a duty, once you have a responsibility, once you have a calling, once you have a purpose, you can't stop building. Today, I want to encourage you that you cannot stop building in your life. This message, it's obviously more than a bed, more than painting and putting things together in your home. This is about your marriage. This is about your family. This is about your parenting. This is about how you are as a son and as a daughter. This is in your work ethic, in your work environment, in your ministry, in your calling as an individual. You cannot stop building. You have started way too many things. You have struggled way too much. You have sacrificed way too much for you to stop today. Family, put some strength together. Put some courage together and let's finish what we started building in our lives. I am excited today because for the next weeks, we're going to be talking about this thing that God's giving us. It's going to be a series, but as we start today, as we set the foundation for this series, I want for us to look at the foundation in our lives. If we're going to build a legacy, if we're going to build a successful marriage, a su successful business, a successful life, a successful in relationships with friends, with family, if we desire all of these great things, let me encourage you that it all starts in our foundation. So as we start this new series, let's take a look at our foundation. And we're going to be reading today in Matthew 7:24. And it says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. His foundation was the rock. Then the, the rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great 
crash the foundation. It's the rock. And I can go really uh, churchy here and who is the rock? And the rock is the foundation. It's not Dwayne, you know, the rock, you know. Ha, hello, well, I'm great at my jokes, you know. Uh, it's not the rock, you know, Dwayne the rock, or I'm not even going to go into Jesus the rock. My point today is as we look at a foundation in our lives, I want to ask you, two questions today. Two questions that I pray you take really serious. Two questions that I really encourage you to meditate, to ponder, to really dig deep and look at your foundation. What in your life is on the rock? What in your life you have built on a solid foundation? And my second question is, what is on sand. What is on the rock and what is on the sand? And as we dive a little bit into this, I want for us in our lives not to only lean on the rock, on the things that we have strong and there are our strengths. Because what I've discovered in my life, and, 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 and as I've done life with several people, typically what happens is that we do life based on our accomplishments, on our merits, on where we're good at. If you're married or even if you're a student, whenever you get into an argument with someone, with your spouse, with your mom, with, any, with anyone, you approach confrontation on your strengths. For example, right? You know, I come and tell Beatrice, hey honey, you haven't washed the dishes today. Which she will probably respond is, yes, I have not done the dishes, but I've done this, 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 and this, right? As we all approach, you know, conflict sometimes, someone confronts you with something and our defense mechanism brings all of our strengths. Well, we're not talking about your strengths. We're talking about that area that you missed the mark. And that is such a hard thing for us to have self-awareness, right? Because it is a defense mechanism. If someone points at something, we take it as an aggression. So our defense mechanism rises up and says, oh, really? But I am this, 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 and that. My suggestion today, that is great. What is on the rock? Great. You have a strong personality. You are a provider. You take care of this needs and those needs. You are, you are home. You help out to take out the trash. You do kind of okay in your class. Whatever your strengths are, that is awesome. That is great. But if we want to build something in our lives that's going to transcend our generations to come, that's going to literally get us to successful places, we need to dig deep into our lives and see what's on the sand. What are my areas of weakness? What are the things in my life that are hindering me right now and today? And this is what we need to do, family. We need to look at those areas of weakness. We need to look at those areas that are a struggle for us. Those habits, those addictions, those hurts that we're carrying, that bitterness, that anger, that frustration, that manipulation, those lies, that lack of integrity or character, how we always fall into the flesh instead of things that are good for us, how we always want to live in seasons that are not intended to be in this season, purity, all of those things. We need to look at all the areas that are in our lives built on sand. And we need to dig deep and dig deep, figure out what is not on the rock and replace those things, uproot those things, demolish those things. Literally, we need to take, get rid of all of those things and take those, all of those things and build them on the rock. We need to build everything that's not on the rock on the rock. I watch several of, of TV shows, right, of construction and remodel, and I love that every single time that something's wrong in the foundation, 
They have to take the whole thing apart and do it right. Why don't we do that in our lives? If you go to McDonald's today or to any fast food place or to a restaurant and you order a meal, you order the thing that you're craving, wanting, desire. You walk into that restaurant with a vision of what you're going to have and you are literally excited for it. You order it and you get it on the plate and it's not exactly as you know that thing should be. Guess what? You return that thing and you say, hey, can I get it right, please? If you get that burger and it's not well done, it doesn't have the toppings or it doesn't look the way that you know it should look, guess what? Then what you and I do is that we take it and talk to someone and say, hey, I, I, I need for you and please do it kindly. Can, can you make this right? Can you make this right? And in our lives, what we typically do is that we don't send stuff back. We just live with those dysfunctions. We live with those habits. We learn to live our lives in an unhealthy way because that's just part of our foundation. My biggest encouragement for every single one of us today is that we need to get it right. We need to get our marriage right. We need to get our friendships right. We need to get our parenting right. A lot of our foundation has been inherited by previous generations that probably, for the most of us, didn't have a knowledge of biblical principles. Didn't have the knowledge of godly ideas and godly things. Because they inherited the same things out of their parents. And you and I have a big responsibility today. We have the responsibility of looking at the things that are not on the rock, that are not biblical principles, because biblical principles, they work. They do work. But you and I, we need to get working on them. I love this verse. It says it plain and simple. Anyone who hears these words, these biblical principles, these things and puts them into practice. It's like a wise man who builds something that will last. As I read this, I pray that something sparks in you to say, well, what are these words that I need to put into practice? What are the things that I need to put into practice in my life to change everything because this is the truth the bible is saying jesus is saying here that the rain and the storms and the wind they're coming and if you don't have your life rooted on the rock based on biblical principles it's gonna fall it's crazy to think and to hear that someone who hear biblical principles and does not put them into practice it's like a foolish man because those winds and waves are coming. And if you don't have that foundation ready, it's going to cause a great crash. You and I, we don't want to crash. We want to build our lives in a successful foundation, in a deep foundation, so that it will last for a thousand generations. So that our marriages are healthy, are happy, are thriving. Doesn't mean without winds or waves. Winds and waves are going to come. But if you're rooted, you're going to work through those things. And God's going to show you the purpose behind every single little thing. You know, in your parenting, what are the things that you need to set right? What are the disciplines, maybe, that you need to start setting into place? What are the regulations and, and, and the intentionality and the praying with your kids and the showing them the Word of God at home? And all of these different things is going to set you up for success. I finish with this, you know. Building something, it takes a whole lot of effort. It takes a whole lot of strength, of endurance. It's not an easy thing. And if it's not easy in the practical, 
If it's not easy in a bed, in painting, remodeling your home, whatever it is, if it's not easy there, if it's a lot of hard work, if it's costly, how much more it's going to be in our lives? How much more it's going to be in our lives letting go of our flesh, of our human natural desires for what's better and what's best for you and for me. Whatever words and biblical principles we hear, let's put them into practice and see God do something incredible in our lives. Family, as a church, we need you to set your life on a solid rock because God's giving us a mission and a vision to reach our whole city, to be an influence of unconditional love, of intentional love, of generous love to our city. And you and I are the ones in charge of that. And in the next weeks and months to come, as everything starts to fall into place and God continue, continues to give His direction and how we move forward as a church, let me tell you something, it's going to be costly, but we need to have our foundation right. So let's partner together as a beautiful church family that we already are, and let's take this to the next level. How do we take this to our next level? The same way. Let's look at our foundation and set it right. Let's read the Word of God. Let's read those biblical principles that are there for you and for me to be successful. Let's look into what are the things that God is calling us to let go of. What are the things that God is asking us to sacrifice? What are the things that God is asking us for us to dra trade for His goodness and His kindness. What are these things for us to grow in intimacy with Him and generosity with Him? Church family, we have an exciting, you know, month, weeks, years ahead. Let's do what He's calling us to do today, to put our eyes on the foundation and let's remove the things that are built on sand so that we can live our lives at the best of our abilities. Let's put into practice every word that God gives us so that we can see His blessings come to pass in our lives. Let me pray for us today. Jesus, we thank you today for who you are. We pray for every single person here today, God. We pray, God, that you would just inspire us to Take a deep look at what are the things that we need to replace in our heart, in our life, in our mindset, in our perspectives, in our personality so that we can trade them, God, for your strong foundation. I pray for that today, God. Bless every single person hearing, every family here tuned in, and all the families represented in these families. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us, Somos. This Thursday, we have Connect Groups. Don't miss out. Also, Sunday, let's tune in and have a great time. Church at home. Love you.